Hey guys, I was just about to change the thermal paste for the processor of my Lenovo laptop. It's a G510 and I bought this laptop in the year 2014. Right now we are in March of 2019, so just around five years ago. The therm thermal paste has never been changed on this laptop and I've always made sure that the, the fan was fully cleaned out and just the basic maintenance, but as far as uh, the thermal paste, that has never been changed. And and I recently did some upgrade work on my in-laws home computer, and that had to that consisted of changing the thermal paste there. So I decided to do that for myself too. This is an Octua NTH1, a highly recommended thermal paste on the internet, and. So far it's working perfectly well for the computer of my in-laws and I believe it's time after five years to take care of my own computer as well. It got, this laptop is an, uh, has an Intel i5-4210M. It was a mid-range processor back in, in, in 2014 and it's performing well to today. So before we um, change the thermal paste, let's just do a little bit of test. I'm, I'm very interested to see what the, the difference will be after after this, this work is done. So as you can see now I have Prime95 here for some stress test. Right now I'm measuring the temperature of the of both coals. It's idling at around 40 degrees centigrade. And I also have the task manager here just to see. I am not running anything intensive now. Firefox is, is shut off. The computer is almost idling. And this is going to show us how much CPU is, is used. So let's get started. I'm going to start Prime95 now. And we should see the, these temperatures start to creep up. So I've started it and you can see the CPU Prime95 is using 98% plus of the CPU and temperatures are starting to creep up. We have 80 degrees C, 81, 83 on core 0. Okay, so I think it's just going to hang at around this this temperature here. The last time I ran, I had a, I have a maximum of 90 degrees C, 87 degrees C on core zero. So the temperature is, is slowly going up to that that maximum amount. You can hear the fan spinning. This computer has a silent fan technology, so I never really had. Uh, a screaming fan, but you can hear that it's, it's trying to cool down the, the CPU now. Okay, I'm going to shut this down now, and we know that it's, it's hanging at around the mid 80s to 90 degrees centigrade, so let me just quickly take a screenshot of this. Okay, so we have that screenshot. So let me stop this. I'm going to turn on off the computer now, open it, and first I'm going to obviously allow this to rest. I don't want to work on the computer around the CPU when it's still hot. So I'm going to let this rest now for a couple of hours and um, come back to showing you guys how I change the thermal paste. So you can see it's pretty efficient in reducing the temperature. It's, it has gone down to the 50s degrees centigrade. So it's going to keep going down. I'll be back soon. Okay, I'm back. I now have left the laptop to cool down. And now I'm going to open up the back. And this is, remember, it's a Lenovo G510. So 
opening the back consists of pulling out these tabs and then removing the battery. And here are two screws that hold retained the whole back cover. Now on your laptop model you can just check on the internet and you will surely find a dismantle guide for your laptop. For me, when I bought this laptop, this was a huge consideration, a huge factor. The fact that I could just simply remove those two screws, slide this out and get access to everything. Hard disk, RAM, CPU, fan, Wi-Fi card. The fan was my main concern in the beginning because I knew that having living in a very dusty city apartment, uh, nothing I can do about the air. So what I can do about making sure my fan doesn't overheat is to get this constantly cleaned out. And I do this once a month at least. And you can see the state at which is, it's in, full of dust. So I needed something I could quickly get to. And I also knew that I was going to update the RAM and some other components in the future, so I, I didn't want to have to dismantle the whole laptop to get to this. So now it's done. It's so unfortunate these days, uh, manufacturers don't want us to get access to this, these internal components, but this is why I'm holding on to an old, an old machine. So this is what we need to change the thermal paste on. This is the CPU under this heatsink, and to get access to that, I have to remove the fan and then the whole heatsink has to come out too. So let me get to that. So I'm going to first unplug the fan. Unscrew it. And while I'm doing this, I'm also going to take the opportunity to clean out this fan. Okay, so yeah, I, I remember this fan is somehow attached to the heat sink itself. I believe it's some kind of tape. You can see the whole structure is moving. So that means I'm going to have to remove everything together. When I usually clean the fan, what I did was I opened these small screws and then with a small brush, I cleaned out the, removing the cover, I cleaned out the fan and the heat sink exhaust uh, section here. So let's unscrew the CPU. You can see from the perfect state of the screws that this, this operation has never been done in five years. I like to keep my screws positioned in on, on the virtual location that replicates exactly where they were. So you can see this is a triangle and I keep my screws laid down somewhere on in a triangle pattern. Okay, so let's lift this up and let's see what's behind this. <laughs> Look at this guys. And this is the same thing I saw with on my in-laws computer. The, the thermal paste is it's fully dry. Maybe it gets melted, uh, it gets a, a bit liquid when the CPU is hot, but look at this. Flakes of thermal paste. Same thing on the CPU. Fully dried. And look at the way that it's put. It's It fully overflowed the dye section here. When I found, when I first decided to change the thermal paste and I went online, I found out that I had just stumbled onto the biggest discussion and debate of the internet of how to put your thermal paste. You know, is it going to be a drop or a cross or a line? You can see that to Lenovo, it just didn't matter. Look at what they did. They didn't care at all. And this laptop has worked perfectly for the last five years I've owned it.
So in the end, that means that it just doesn't matter how you you put the thermal paste. As long as it's there, it surely can't be as bad as having flakes of thermal paste. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this now. I'm going to clean it with um, my isopropyl alcohol and some earbud, some made of cotton to clean the ears. And I'm just quickly going to go around this area and clean the heat sink base too. Okay, so now I'm going to quickly give a clean to the fan while the CPU is getting dry. So as you can see, it's starting to get clogged up with dust. Not in the worst shape that it has been, but this is just testament to the fact that I always um, clean this very regularly. So now I have just a small brush and I'm going to use this brush to go in between the fan and I'm beginning to build up a lot of dust so I'm just going to go do this outside now. You can see the Lenovo fan has a lot of, of uh, blades and you need something small like this to get in between them. So I'm just going to go do this quickly and be right back. Okay so I'm back, it's done. You can see I've cleaned out the exhaust um, and the the fins that the air blows out through and this is very important when your fan starts to make a lot of noise it means that it's having a hard time pushing the air out of this so you can see now they are fully clean and this you can do with that brush as well as blow with compressed air okay so now looks like we are at a good time we can the CPU is has been perfectly cleaned out and now all we need to do is put our, our thermal paste there and then put this back on top so I'm just going to pass one last time on this heat sink with isopropyl alcohol just to make sure that no dust accumulated on it while I was cleaning out the fan. Heatsink is ready. CPU is ready. Now it's time to put the thermal paste. So I'm just going to go ahead now and you can see in my case the CPU die is rectangular. I'm just going to put a very small line Just like that. I know the YouTuber Carrie Holtzman, Holtzman I think, he likes to spread out his thermal paste on the whole die of the CPU. Hmm, looks like a good idea to me. Okay, so there is just a small layer across everything there. And when the heatsink comes from above and presses onto the CPU, it's going to squeeze it out and fill up all the, the gaps.
and now it's seated so now with the screws okay, not too tight first Okay, so now I'm going to tighten this down. If you have more than three screws, then you can go in a star pattern. Just keep going opposite so that you have an even pressure when you're pushing down the heat sink onto the CPU. And that's it. Simple as that. I plug back in the fan. Don't forget to plug back that fan in. Now I'm going to quickly cover, screw back the fan cover in place. And that's it. Fan cover screwed in place. CPU heatsink put back in place. And now, all that's left to do is put back this cover. Battery back in place and locked. Let's power on the computer to see if it comes on and it does. And it's in so it works looks like we didn't damage anything in the in this process so now i'm going to connect it back to my um, monitor and start again the prime 95 test just to take a look at the new temperatures with the the fully fresh thermal paste so let me set this up and i'll be back right now look at these figures 35 34 on core one we are idling at 35 degrees centigrade that's absolutely i've never seen this i've never seen this uh this low temperature and you can see that cpu is being used at 12 percent looks like avg the antivirus is starting to do some uh, some updates some search disk is 99 percent used but we are still idling at 34 degrees C. That's absolutely incredible. I, I just didn't expect this. We used to, I used to idle at around 40 to 43 degrees C, let's say 38, 39 when the computer is just freshly started. But this is a very, very good temperature. So now I have a Prime 95 here ready to go again. And I'm going to start the stress test. And let's see the temperatures. Mind you, what you can see here. It, the background behind here is the maximum that we I took a screenshot of before. If you remember, it was 87 and 85. I, I can't believe this, guys. Look at this. Nine, 75, am I saying that correctly? 71. And look at the old temperatures here. Let me bring the camera closer. This below are the old temperatures and these are the new ones after thermal change thermal paste change okay you can see it here now up 97 98 percent used by prime and look at the temperature we hit max of 85 and 83 here but we used to hit 90s and 87 here and look at the temperatures and you can see that as soon as prime lets go of the of the cpu it immediately comes back down 
the temperature is, is tending to go downwards instead of uh, spiraling out of control like before. So I'll call this a success guys, look at 98% CPU used by Prime, 2 giga, two gigabytes of uh, RAM used by that software to stress test and you can see the temperatures. This is this was a huge success, and it, it just goes to show you that it just it does not matter what style you put the thermal paste in, because when you're putting the thermal paste on the CPU, you're removing dried up thermal paste, and the C and the computer has been working all this time with that very bad quality thermal paste that is now dried up. So there's just you you just cannot go wrong. Okay, where is the thermal paste now? Okay, here you go. Not electrically conductive. So even if it it's moves out of the, the CPU die onto a nearby components, it's not conducting anything. It's not going to short circuit anything. So I'll, I'll say this is a success, guys. And as soon as the CPU is just let go a bit, the temperatures are, are tending to go downwards instead of up and up and up. 79 core one. You can see it and we've been running now the test for much longer than we ran the last time. The last time I ran it before the change of uh, the thermal paste, the temperatures were just going higher and higher and I'm sure if I had left this for many hours, it, it would have just shut down. The CPU would just throttle down when it got to 100%. Okay guys, so that's a success, uh, thanks for watching and hearing me ramble on, I will see you guys in my next video, thanks, take care.